welcome everybody to the Tuesday, January 17th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, all the meetings order. First item on the agenda, vote to approve the minutes of January 3rd. Where did you get a chance to look at them? Yes. That was very good again. Uh, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. There's four warrants. Um, accounts payable warrant of $146,308.31. Payroll warrant in the amount of $125,809.76. Payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $32,144.95. And the activities fund warrant in the amount of $500.76. Any questions about any of them? On here. <coughs> to approve the warrants. Second. No in favor. Aye. Aye. Meetings attended by select board members. Chris, anything? Just the one we had earlier on the fall <laughs> meeting. That's it. <laughs> Erica? Same. Hold on here. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Um, I've had a Frontier, two frontier budget meetings, frontier school committee meeting, Conway budget meeting, and Conway school committee meeting. And what are the meetings that we have? Any public unfinished business? No. New business. Review and vote to sign off on the farmlands of local important list from Mike Averill. National Resources NRCS. Um, I thought that that was kind of a weird request because it's all it's this list of. To me, it was a technical list requiring professional knowledge, and then it's sort of submitted by the state conservationist and me. Like I have no independent knowledge of these things, and I thought the idea of like. A, it's, it, it can only be like a rubber stamp. You just have to trust right. that this guy knows what he's talking about. And so, but I don't know. You know, might be one in there that he's got way mixed up, and it, but who knows? But too bad. Like I, that, it just seems silly. Like, why would I be signing that? That is, but apparently it's required. So. Right. He wasn't able to make it tonight, but my understanding is, and I think I forwarded. Um, in the packet, his email to me, because I was a little confused about it first. The, the listing at first I thought might have been by our GIS, but no, you go into the web soil survey and those are the soil types. So the name right there is actually, you know, so Swansea Muck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it'd be nice to see where on the map of Conway these are mapped out. So I asked him if that's something we could see eventually. And I wondered if there was an application that maybe we could have on hand at both the town offices and town um, the assessor's office because they deal with 61. So it makes sense for them to be able to, because he does say in his email, you know, it'll be stored as the technical guide where it will be available for consideration if or when a Conway farm landowner seeks agricultural preservation under this. Yeah. So, you know, I guess we're just, it's just approving the soil types that are of local importance. So. Good. Mm. Well, I moved that Bill sign off <laughs> on the farmland of local importance. Second. Uh, Second then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, license renewals. Baker's Country Store, J and J Auto Sales, J and J Mags Antiques, Oesco, Conway Inn. So these reflect our decision to discount. And uh, we should have been done by January first, uh, but we're we're doing it now. So, anybody have any questions about those? Yeah. So you approve signing? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. It's a joint committee motion. Um, so discussion. Vote on the application to the Community Preservation Committee for the approximately 
Well, we know the exact amount. It's three thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars and eleven cents for the town's expenses relative to the track or tier. So, I'll explain this a little bit. What I know about it. Um, the uh, so the C CPA funding the the school is has, has submitted applications for CPA funding for the tenant for the Conway's portion of the tennis court. The, the four tennis courts in frontier that are being completely redone. Um, and Conway's share of that is seven is going to be 17,000 in there. And then also the uh at, for Conway Grammar School, the, the school committee is doing an application for the fireproof stage curtain, um, which is ten thousand dollars. But the track, um the select board has to make that application, even though it's a school thing, because uh, the school, the town has already voted to incur debt that we did. We took out a bond to do that track two years ago, and this is this is like year two of interest only payment. But the town can have can, it's a recreational facility. The town can choose to fund it however the town wants. So. We can do it, we can fund our assessment for the track through CPA, but the school can't do it because the school already asked the town to pay for it in a bond. Mm -hmm. So this is the select board deciding how he wants to fund it. So um, I thought it's 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 so eligible. I mean, it's a track and it's a nice, it's actually nice. I actually have been trying to start running again mm -hmm. um and it's it's really easy on the ankles and knees because it's padded it's really nice it's like the rubber yeah mm -hmm. yeah I mean, it's, it was really well done um so that's but but we the select board meaning we veronique have to apply for that <laughs> uh, have to fill out the application for that and then they'll have the hearing for that i guess the same time they do the other screen so what is what is the motion that we would need? So to the make motion the is to vote as a select board to apply to the CPC to the Community Preservation Committee for Conway um, share of the fiscal year 24 track assessment at Frontier Regional, which and is which is three thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars and eleven cents. And if we didn't apply if, to the cpc where would we get that money from because obviously like we have to pay it well it's not to, it's not just that if if cpc cpc says yes the town meeting still has to vote yes there's still potential the town meeting will say no so uh there is there will be enough money to make sure that there's enough money in the overall so the student revolving fund so that if necessary it could be funded that way but um it's, uh, we're also not the only town that's, that's applying to CPA for mm -hmm. the, their track assessments. We might be on Sunday when I've got as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the motion. Uh, I second that. Okay. If it takes us off of the bond, we're paying that just well. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. It's it's it's, it's going to be a recurring thing for the next yeah. think, like seven more years or something. Eight more years. Um, so, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Two names. So, we're, and we're accepting the resignation of Chief Bob Baker and the appointment of Bill McLaughlin. We fill out Chief Baker's term on the Community and Economic Development Committee. Term ending June 30th, 2025. Okay, with that, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions about that? Yeah, who was, I mean, just happy that anyone's willing to serve on any committee. Bill <laughs> McLaughlin yeah. is, uh, was on the cable committee. And he's been very active attending these oh, CEDC meetings. Yeah, he was on the cable committee with Bob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. He's kind of, he's a nice enough fellow. He's willing to serve. Yeah. I'm like, 
Yep. Yep. So, um, um, I move that we appoint William McLaughlin to fill out Chief Baker's term from the Community Economic Development Committee through June 30th, 2025. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Items not anticipated 48 hours. And you have a bid? Yes, and it just came in, at, you know, um, after we'd already set this up. But these are just the annual municipal bids that um, we sign up for so that we get competitive pricing through the FERC file, which is a much better deal. So it's literally just signing the second will be working. And we had to do it tonight because it's due by January 20th. So what are we, and what specifically are we including up with specific bids? Um, um, materials. Yeah, it's materials. There are a lot a lot of different things. They um, I don't know specifically in this one, but I mean, uh, Yes, it's right here. All right. Material bids, which include aggregates, loan, coal patch, geotextiles, calcium chloride products, culverts, guardrail products, and hot mix, hot mix asphalt picked up. This so, is just specific to the highway department. Right? Correct. It's only yeah. highway department. Yes. <clears throat> and they, they don't tell you how much it is. It's giving them authority to go out and get bids. Correct. Right. It's not like we're. I mean, I think we have to give a certain estimate, estimate them now, because how else are they going to get a decent price if they don't know? Well, that's what I wanted to discuss is um, based on preliminary indications of what a highway increase might be in the budget this year. Uh, I don't know how much, I don't know whether we're going to be in for our usual amount, is what I'm saying. Well, based on, based on the anticipated increase in prices of all these. Right, products. but this is just giving us the number. It's not saying how many tons that we're committed to. You sure, know. we're not obligating ourselves to commit to any uh, specific obligation where you can't use any other um, no. contract. Yeah. You either agree solely to this contract right. or you don't. And I've got to tell you, I can't imagine us being able to get no, no, no. anything outside of this that would be better, so. So yeah, prices are going up, but um, knowing how good Ron is at finding the least expensive alternatives. That's how he's substitute first. Okay, so do we need to take a vote? What is the vote that we're taking to participate in the annual FERCOG Highway Department bidding process? Correct, to okay. vote to sign the contract document for the bid. Okay. Um, all right. We're authorizing Ron to sign it. Um, I got the right. Or no, the bad is, yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I'm I mean, sorry. we could have done it that way, but that's not you know. right. <laughs> okay, got it. Um, all right. Uh, did, did, was there a second? Was there a motion? I move that we authorize Phil to sign the um, uh, contract for construction services bids. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 An administrator update. Make a correction here for your budget schedule. Uh, okay. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is on my update itself, and the very last one, I I, mean, I said joint budget meetings with the select board. I meant the finance committee. <laughs> um, so you wanted to, well, I guess the two things I did want to make sure that you all had in hand was one, the transfer station for the date, because that's coming up, and I just want to make sure that. This was approved to send out the, um, and I run it by Jan. She's all good with it. So as long as we, I can post that right away and start getting handing it out the transfer station, then. So. Um, and then, so the budget schedule. And you wanted to change something on that, Phil? Yeah. Okay. 
What, what is listed for Monday, March 13th? Um, needs to go down to uh, no March thirteenth is the day for 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 the school. That's what we want. I don't know. It all made sense when I was looking at this before. <laughs> now I'm done. Well. <laughs> Frontier budget is that is going to be to the towns by March 11th, so we'll have it by yeah March 13th. The grammar school we can do earlier. All right. Um, actually, I guess we can keep the way it is. Okay. The only thing that I don't have that's on um, that's not on yours is on April and April third is the date that all warrant articles have to be to the select board. I think the one you have says something like draft warrant articles. But yeah. So yeah. So that's that's what it means is all warrant articles are due to the select board on April third. Yeah. She put that in the um, um, so there is Oh okay. All right. For some talk that there might be a citizen petition about the wood lot, about the I mean, the park wood, wood bank, wood bank, wood bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's several people that really want to do that. So the rest of my report was, um, I don't have to go through the whole thing, but I attended a couple of trainings. We did get our cybersecurity assessment, and I can't wait for the draft report, but basically, I think I mentioned this to you all before, but we got a little pretty good review in terms of our security at the moment, which is great. Thank you, Roy. Um, and so there was the First Amendment audits training, and then there was an emergency operations center, basic operations training, um, that I attended and then all the budget requests were due last Friday. So I'm currently working on sticking those all into that big omnibus spreadsheet for starting next week's meeting. Absolutely. And Adam has a wonderful surprise for you. <laughs> well, maybe a quick surprise. <laughs> so about five or six weeks ago, I rescued a Steinway piano. And the guy was going to chop it up. But a few years ago, he had it assessed for insurance purposes. And they said, well, if you get it up to speed, it could be worth between twenty or $30,000. Because these were only made for about three years in the 1880s. And so I've been doing research on it. And you know, I had a guy look at it. And he said to me, or I said to him, I'm guessing between two and three grand to fix it. And he said he would be guessing correctly, but he said it's well worth it. And last meeting when I was setting up the tables, out of the corner of my eye, that is the sister piano, the one I just got. Really? That's a Steinway. That is a Steinway. The serial number on the inside is not far off from the one that I just got. And I just thought, we should, or I should bring it to your attention that. So I thought if I say something to the people at home, I can get that funny. That this is a rather valuable thing sitting in the kitchen. That oh my goodness. To the town. It's so out of time. I mean, it could have, you know what? It's not that bad. There's some, that front bolt, well, there's some lattice missing. And actually, the lattice ones are even rarer than. Like no most way. of the pictures you find online, mm -hmm. they're just flat board. And the lattice ones are even rarer than the other ones. Yeah. From what I can gather from my research so far. But the serial number in there, you know, mine is like 6432 something, and this one is like 643 
seven. I mean, they were probably in the shop at the same time. So I don't know if this came from the old town hall. I don't know if it was came from the high school or whatever. But I just wanted to make you aware that this. Aren't, are there people that take care of pay it? less for it and fix it up themselves? <laughs> Do we have I don't think this will, will take much to fix up. But I just wanted you guys to be aware that this is. We have a Steinway in our. Yeah, this is going to be one Steinway for one elevator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these are, you know, even, you know, a music teacher, you all know that, uh, you know, also plays in a band. I showed her a picture of this without saying anything else. She didn't want to look at it and said, fix it up, you've got a $20,000. Wow. And this is like, the same thing. Oh. I mean, exactly. It's. I Does yours have the lattice work on it too? Mine has the lattice work. Mine doesn't have the little triangle wedges on the side there mm -hmm. underneath. Um, but he said that's not a big deal. You know, Richard Loomis is the guy that I follow. He's been doing it for a long time. He's even got the antique wood. To do some fixing up on mine. I just, from all the research I've done, this is this is a gem. Some of these <laughs> nice, good research. Yeah, that is. Make sure we lock up really well. So, well, <laughs> well, but yeah, yeah I mean, of course, it's in this room where people are putting drinks on it. And yeah, it's yeah. sanitary stuff. <laughs> Maybe we could get a nice cover for it or something. <laughs> well, it's everything I've looked up, and actually, Jamie has looked up more than me because he's so excited. By it. So everything he's found, it's they're not common. Not all right. And now we got two right across the street from each other that we're in the work at the same time. It's wild. Is. Dueling, yes. yeah. I used to like those concerts with the dueling games on stage. I'm not bringing it home. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the one thing about the budget schedule is, um, there, you would like to just have a second thing for highway. There's no way that these guys have like to be getting involved in that one night. Okay, we can continue to the sixth. And this it, it has been posted on the website too. I'll make those changes, but just so you know, it's available for everybody as well. So it, um, Darius should be sending you out the official notice that February 16th is the Conway Grammar School first reading of the budget at the, at the school at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. There's actually a policy question that we left up in the air for uh, to hear from the select board and the uh, and the finance committee. There's a decision about whether because the the, the school Conway Grammar School's budget is not waiting on the governor like like Frontiers is like we, we have much better indication of what the school's revenue is and what the expenses are. And the preliminary budget that we worked out from Conway Grammar School is an increase of uh, Oops, um, 3.37% 3. increase, so an increase of 70,000. But of, of that, 21,000 is um, retirement sick pay buyback. And that has never been a budget line item. And um, right now it's in the budget. 1% in the budget is 20 is almost 21,000. And what we can do, um, I make sure that there's enough to do this, is we could pay that one item out of the revolving fund and it would not be on our budget. But there are reasons 
that makes sense. And there are also drawbacks to that. So that would be something that we can decide all together on February 16th. So we have the theoretical ability to make the Conway Grammar School budget look lower on paper. But may not be the smartest thing to do that, but we may decide it. So, which brings us to the, in, in select board member concerns. That was the, if you saw the letter from Darius Modesto to, mm -hmm. and like you always, I don't know, you've probably been around long enough to hear me say at one of these meetings, this Commonwealth of Massachusetts is just an unreliable partner. And this is a perfect example why. You just get hit out of left field with something just so stupid like this. And that, that there's actually, an office called the Operational Services Division of the state's Executive Office of Administration and Finance. And some person in there can just decide that you should have to pay another $120,000 in your assessment. Like, that's basically it. It's nuts. It's out of left field. It was totally unexpected. And um, it's, it's what, uh, you know, it's 2% of the budget, more than that, 3% of the budget. So that this, there was a desire to get like from some computer this, da, 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 all these, like wish everything that we wanted to do is like, can't do it. Because the operational services division says you can't this year. You know. Yeah. The only good thing about it is because we have wings, the wings program at Conway Grammar School, we don't have any Conway kids specifically. We're the only elementary school without a kid. That, so we're lucky the other three schools in our district are also getting hit on the grammar school level. And uh, we're not, so it's still brutal. And the state's already said, this is how it's gonna be, there's no point. But it's hard to explain to people. That's the thing. Like, he, he, you know, Frontiers is going to be a three point something if we're lucky. And you're going to, you know, we don't know what we don't know what our assessment is yet, but just on the expense side. Um, and, and Frontier, like if, if there was some, the other side of that is we did have sort of a miraculous increase in revenue in one area at Frontier, the school choice, like the front, which was the front page, uh, yeah. Greenfield. Um, the number of increased school choice applicants from Greenfield and from Pioneer and from Mohawk is crazy. Like those, those districts are avoiding. You know, they're all coming to our districts. So they're having to say no to the ones, but there's still some grades they want to do. Any questions about any of that? So just for your calendar, February 16th is a Conley Grammar School the Conley budget at six o'clock. Um, March 7th at 6 p.m. is the Frontier budget confab at the library, Frontier Regional at six o'clock. And traditionally, these are things that the Finance Committee is at least supposed to have one person there then um, the select board usually shows up to because they're they always in, end up involving policy questions. I'm sorry, one more time. The frontier frontier is March seventh at six p.m. We should probably repeat this next week for the finance. Yes. Than that, email. No, it's next meeting is Monday, the 23rd, 6 p.m. Same back channel, same back time. <laughs> and uh, to return. Uh, second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.